Well, okay, if you can hear me, just chill for a second while I make sure everything is working. And it looks like it is. Okay, hello and welcome to the stream. Uh, let me go ahead and I'm back on my VM and because I froze it and unfroze it, I will need to restore some stuff. I was going to do this before I um, started streaming, but then it occurred to me that would be helpful to you. And that's not my goal. Um, what my goals actually are today, I actually have them... I'm very smart. I have them written down. Um, on readme.stream. So let's take a look at this real quick. Okay, uh, it's primarily for my reference, of course. Okay, um, if you look at this, this is actually wrong, and we're going to fix it later on. It turns out we don't really care where the uh, the uh, umbral cone is. That's not our point of interest. Our only point of interest is what's the angle to the edge of the disk, and what's the angle to the edge of the planet, and to the center of the planet, and to the other center of the other edge of the planet. But we're going to fix that later because I would want to. The first thing I'd really like to do, though, is transfer the umbral cone stuff to C-Spice. My ultimate goal is to use all this stuff in C-Spice, not in math, not in Mathix, uh, because obviously all the other functions for astronomy are in C-Spice, not in Mathix. Uh, then we will go ahead and fix the uh, umbral cone stuff. Uh, and then if this actually gets this working, we can actually test to see if my program uh, can predict solar and lunar eclipses, which are known, of course, so I could test whether that works for Earth. Uh, of course, I'm using a spherical approximation to the, uh, to the ellipsoids that are make up the Earth. Uh, and the Moon and Sun, I think, are actually fairly spherical to begin with. But, um, but for the Earth, it's, it's elliptical, so ellipsoid. So the, uh, the radius I use will have a, an effect on that. Uh, and then, if all that works, we're going to compute the Jovian eclipses, write up the results, um, and tell people that if they want to confirm them, unfortunately, Stellarium does not show lunar eclipses from Jupiter, but you can go to the target where the eclipse is occurring and see that uh, the sun is totally eclipsed, which is proof that there's at least a partial eclipse uh, as viewed from anywhere. And that's one interesting point that I, and I always thought solar eclipses and lunar eclipses were very similar to each other, but they're really not. Um, in a lunar eclipse, the, uh, the moon, you know, the normally the light side of the moon gets no light whatsoever. So no matter where you're looking, uh, you know, no matter where in the universe or in the solar system you're looking at the moon from, it's going to be eclipsed because it's just not getting light. In a solar eclipse, though, the sun doesn't actually lose light. It generates light. It's just, um, it's just the moon shadowing the, the sun. But um, if you were to look from a different perspective, the sun would still be there shining bright. Uh, so that's why I, g I guess I never really thought about it. That's why solar eclipses are only uh, visible from a limited point of view, but lunar eclipses are visible everywhere because it, it literally the, the moon it does it, ha it has less light to reflect. The sun always has plenty of light to reflect to uh, not to, yeah to to send, um, but you know it can be blocked from a certain location, but it can't be blocked uh, across the entire you know solar system. Okay, now that I've babbled through that. Let's, okay, we're getting a little bit of slowness here, which I don't like. Um, as always, running far too much stuff. Um, let me see something real here, real quick. But, ooh, that's not what I meant to do. I hope I have ATOP installed here. I do. So who, what's killing us here? Well, according to this, ATOP itself is killing us. So that's not really good. Um, okay, I thought maybe I had something really heavy running, like Docker, which I don't, so we're good. Okay, so let's go ahead and... Um, now, as you know, I don't know how to program in C, so I put everything in an H file, and then include that. You see the H has changed on disk? That's, that's freaking weird, because it's an SSHF, S. Oh, maybe I had it, I guess, from uh, something else. Okay, um, so there's a lot of crap here. Um, and we're going to add some more. Uh, wow, there is a lot of crap here. And I guess what I'm doing here is I'm using this um, notation for uh, for describing what the function does. I'm going to try to be a little bit better about the one we're adding now. Um, we're 47% of the way through, so maybe I'd better do this a little bit. Yeah, let's see. Wow, it would be really, really nice to know what these functions did. But, you know, you can't have everything. And I think this is Javadoc syntax, so it's probably not, it's not really correct C. Um, but okay. So the function we're going to write here is basically the umbral cone computer. I don't have a name for the function yet, but uh, given um, a light generating object S, e.g. the sun, which is the only light generating object in our solar system, maybe, um, uh, uh, S, 
you're right, generating object S as a uh, three element vector, uh, as a three element position vector. And um, a radius SR given the following. See how we do that? A light generating object S uh, as a three position element vector radius of S as SR and eclipsing, uh, well, okay, an other object T, e.g. Jupiter, as a three element position vector. Now we're not going to do the whole computation for like IO and see where it's going to eclipse. We're just going to compute the umbral cone for two elements and we're going to use it later for three elements. Um, Of. Now, one of the uglinesses here is we are assuming that TR is uh, um, that TR is less than SR. That uh, the sun is bigger than the thing that's going to be um, uh, that's going to be eclipsing it. Um, that is true in our case because for the solar system, provided we want the sun to be the sun is usually the biggest source of light we have, so that that's going to work for us. Uh, but in reality lift this assumption. Okay. And another to do maybe is, um, well, I was thinking we could allow the uh, objects in either order instead of having to be light generating and then uh, other object, but I think that actually is useful. So we're going to go ahead and, and leave it like that. Um, and then we need to say returns. What are we going to return? And as always, as we do in C-Spice, we're not really going to return a value. We're going to make them send it to us and just fill it in for them. Okay, so the three things we want to return is uh, um point, like this, the uh, point of the umbral cone, and there's only one point in the cone, so that's not ambiguous, um vect, vec, um, the vector pointing from T to S, uh, and I don't know if that's, that's going to be, so from Jupiter to the Sun. This is, it doesn't really matter for angles, but let's make sure, we, you know, let's be consistent. So that's the vector pointing from T to S and the um ang, the angle of the umbral cone. So these are, these are all things we've done before, so there's nothing new here. And let's see, um point, vector, yeah, this is, this is going to be a fun looking function here. And I don't even remember how to write, I think it's a uh, return value is going to be void umbral data. That's a pretty good name for it. And now let me see how I actually, um, I think I've written other functions that take, um, and I say that and I don't, yeah, here it is. Um, okay, hang on, spice element plant J. Yeah, I have taken other t cases where I do take an array and change it. Uh, this is a pass by uh, reference, I think, but I think all arrays are passed by reference because array copying is, is not a thing. I, I'm just going to pretend that made sense. Okay, so what we want from your mama. I don't know what I want from your mama. Nice gift would be nice. Uh, anyway, uh, so we're going to say spice double S3. That's the uh, position of, um, that's the position of S, spice double S or the radius of S, spice double T3, that's the other object, spice double um, TR. Now here, even though we're using these as parameters, we're going to be changing them. Um, spice, oh actually the umbral point is going to be a three-dimensional vector, but that's, that's fine. Um, point three. So I, and again, the vector is also going to be a three-dimensional point. So we'll do this. And the angle is just going to be in, I'm, I'm not even going to say in radians because I'm just going to assume that we're at this level. Uh, that's the only thing we're really allowed to talk about is radians. So there it is. And the fr function won't return anything because it is a void function. Okay, so how do we how do we set this up now? Well, I don't know. Um, actually, we, we looked at the formulas yesterday in Mathematica, in MathX rather, which is like Mathematica. So let's go ahead and get those formulas up and running and convert them to C. It's not going to be very difficult, I think. Uh, but of course, I could be wrong and it could be impossible. So that those are sort of the parameters I'm setting up here. 
Okay, let's see. Uh, okay, we are in, in, in screen, which is nice. Alright, so blah 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 blah. Why is this taking so long? Okay. Now, I don't remember how, what I named my variables or anything, obviously, but. Um, uh, la, 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 la. There's only one. I think I can do this in Mathematica, in, in, in Emacs. No, I can't. Oh, wow. I actually have to say. Uh, you can sometimes do weird stuff with Emacs that does wildcarding, but apparently not here. Okay, so we've loaded this. Uh, the angle is blah, 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 and we're going to have to get rid of all of this, I think. Um, terminal point, so all of this, because these are specific values, and we're now doing our computations in general. Um, I think we're okay. Terminating point, descending angle. Line circle. And these are all graphic stuff, which is fine. Line. Ah, this time I do remember that we actually put a lot of this crap into playground. Ha ha ha. So here again, we're not going to use specific values. We want to get sort of the general case going. Um, which means I've loaded the wrong file. So we're going to do this. And I'm the only one in chat, which is good. I mean, yesterday we got, like, according to uh, Twitch, we got 16 people. So I'm assuming someone helped me out there, because uh, no way in hell I'm getting uh, 16 people in this by myself. So the cone point is line T2, and let's see if we now have that as a, uh, as a, um, we do. This is a vector. And now... This might be the point where I... And we can actually put it in C form, by the way. That, that's, I think. We can Mathematica. Yeah, we can't here, though. Um, so the problem with this is... I want to simplify it. And and this is the thing I always die on, is... I don't like to put it in like this, because I always want to simplify it. But if it doesn't simplify, really... Oh, that's nice then I spend too much time simplifying. In this case, it looks like we can actually do a simplify. All right, so our cone point will be um, this sucker. Obviously, we'll have to convert it into C form, but that should not be difficult. Um, so this is our umbral point. Uh, the cone, the base of the cone of where the umbra is. Ooh, shiny. Um, and this, to me, does not look too bad. There, I mean, there's something going to happen that's going to make me uh, unhappy here in just a sec, but I don't know what it is yet, so I'm happy for now. Look at that. This is the second element. This is the third element. These look really, really nice. I mean, why am I typing minus when I mean equal? My keyboard is kind of going, but I don't think we're at that point yet. And then umbral point three, two which is the third point. Oh, that looks really gorgeous. In fact, that looks so gorgeous, I almost want to pre-calculate SR minus TR, uh, because these things are very symmetric. But I'm going to let C... Actually, I think the, the C compiler might uh, optimize that for me. Okay, that is awesome. That is So we have the umbral point down. Now we need the umbral vector. Um, the umbral vector is actually trivial. Um, it's going to just go from T to S. I don't even know if I bother to compute it, because it's just going to be basically T minus S, or S minus T. Ang1 and Ang1 and Ang2 are going to be the, the, the things we actually are going to be interested in. Um, yeah, let's take a look at Ang1 and Ang2. Those are the ones that are going to be... Um, those are the ones that are going to be uh, interesting to us. So, And they should be equal. Uh, although it might not be obvious that they're equal. So Ang1 is this, Ang2 is this. Um... And see, this is where I get unhappy and, and spend too much time simplifying. Um, let's do this and see what it says. Oh, they're not gonna—they're not gonna do it for us. They're not gonna tell us if they're equal. Um, okay. Well, let's simplify ang one and see if we get anything. We should get like a very symmetric. F they're the same thing, so that's not bad looking there. Simplify ang two. Um, And the only thing I don't like here is we... I want to sort of use vector length as a... because that they have that. 
uh, and what this, all of this stuff here is, I think, is, um, oh, this is actually exactly the length of the vector SR over minus TR. Um, and that's not the actual angle either, that's the, um, that's the uh, arc, that's some bizarre thing of the, uh, so angle Q, oh, there it is, angle Q is the one I want. I am so dumb. That looks really bad. Okay. And I think I know, I think I know what's going on here, actually, I think we can fix this. Okay, and the problem here is it actually, when we say, like, the norm of a vector, it actually breaks it out. We don't really want that. So when we say, like, norm ABC, it goes ahead and does this. But we actually have a vector norm function in C Spice that we'd like to use. We don't need it to be simplified like this. So I think there is a way to, um, there is a way to fix this. And let's see. Vector angle QX, okay. Cone point. Oh, you know what? Okay, so vector angle they have defined as something that, yeah, let's, let's. So I think the problem here is going to be, yeah, their vector angle actually separates out stuff, which we don't need to do here, because we, we also have a vector angle function, actually. So what we're taking the vector angle of is, um, oh, I'm sorry, this is the wrong one. This is the vector angle to point Q, the third thing which we're not even looking at right now. Okay, so the cone point we've got, and now we just need the freaking angle between uh, the cone's vector, um, which is, well, actually, I think maybe we should compute the cone's vector. I'm surprised we don't already do it here. Oh, hang on, we, maybe we do. Wow, okay. So the vector, I just make sh need to make sure I got the direction right, is going to be uh, go to S and then minus off T. So yeah, it's going to be just be S minus T. Um, and it somehow worries me that, uh, well, let's just, that we know that one, so let's go ahead and do this one. But I mean, that's, that's the easy one. Um, now I'm wondering, can I? I'm going to regret this. Can I multi-assign here without having to assign per component? I mean, you should be able to do this. Um, but C is kind of weird, so you never know. Okay, and then if I can do that, I can do that with umvec as well. Now, I know what you're saying. Hey, aren't you breaking uh, existing code by doing this? And the answer is yes, I am. So I really shouldn't be doing this. But, uh, um, but I am. Okay, so the umbral vector is going to just be... Um, what did I say? Sx minus Tx, Sy minus Ty, Sz minus Tz. And if you're British, learn how to pronounce the letter Z. Okay, so the final thing we need, which is I guess the really sort of the important one, is the umbral angle. And I'm pretty sure we computed it up here, but I forgot where. And I think maybe it is a uh, cone point Tr over the norm. Uh, see, I'm pretty sure it's the, like the, it's not that, it's like the arc Okay, so we have the we have the umbral vector and the umbr umbral point, and we know um, we know what S R and T R are. So uh, oh, so these okay, so these numbers are going to be S R over um, the distance. So the SR is going to be the, let's go back to our incorrect but fun, nope, we, this is the wrong incorrect but fun diagram. Um, I forgot what the other one was, but okay. So we're going to say basically it's going to be um, opposite, okay, so the distance is, okay, so I see it. This is the distance between um, the S planet and the cone point, and this is the radius, so this is the, uh, this is the arc tangent. I think of the value. It's going to be opposite. Yeah, that's the opposite over adjacent. So it's the arc tangent of this value. And um, it kind of bugs me that these numbers don't look the same. I mean, partly because they're doing all this weird stuff here where they um, where they they s spread out the norm, which I don't like. But we can get we can get around that. Um, so let's see. 
see, let's see, let's see. So, I, I mean, this is... Uh, if I can find my Emacs. Nope, my Emacs is gone forever. There we are. Um, in this norm, we should be able to compute. This norm is actually... Oh, you know, because we just need the vector to point, the umbral vector. Um, we can actually use the umbral vector uh, for this. Because uh, we, we just said it points from S to T. We didn't say, you know, how it does that. So we can actually make this... Um, this is really nice because we get to define stuff uh, based on other stuff. Okay, so here we're going to say, by the way, in this case, SX and TX are both in the same direction. Um, so I can just say SX minus cone point, uh, minus um point zero. Uh, in fact, can I do vector subtract? That would be too clever. Um, it really is the, the vector subtraction of, of SX, SY, S. Ooh, you don't want to do, do it. Okay, sorry, I, I decided I do want to do it after all. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and take a look at the SPICE documentation that I have locally. V sub C. Okay. So the two things to subtract and the uh, resulting vector. Uh, so we're going to subtract, because we're given, uh, let's see, T and umbral point, both of these are vectors, and we want the result to be basically the umbral vector. I am so freaking clever. Um, so this assigns the umbral vector, and then the angle is going to be <laughs> either TR over the number of the, um, um, okay. Okay, okay, hang on. I gotta be a little bit careful here. Because I'm using T for the umbral vector, not S, it's the it's going to be TR over the V norm. Uh, does V norm one of the few functions that actually does return? It uh, doesn't require that you send in something. It actually returns a double. I think it, I think it is actually. Um, yeah, it returns a spice double, so we can actually just do this. So TR over V norm C of V sub C, and uh, and that is of course the uh, no no. That is the um, that is the tangent of the angle, so we just need an arc tan in here. I get the feeling that I'm I'm doing arc tan wrong somehow, but we'll just set amang equal to arc tan. So many things to do here. Many fun things you can do here. Um, the first is to make sure that the damn thing still compiles, and if it does, uh, we will go into a playground to test it. Not an actual playground with actual children. Um, so, you know, if you're into that, sorry. Um, just a, a playground uh, file. So let's go over here to bc git astro. I have a make file that does something really weird, but it does do kind of what it needs to do. So now, let's see. Previous def... Oh, 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 it's unhappy. Um, and I think it didn't make any of these files because... Um, Oh, wow. So, and I'm worried about... Oh, actually, let's go ahead and look for bclib, because that's the thing that I've changed. Error unknown type spice angle. Yeah, that is awesome. I, I am a moron. It's spice double, of course. The umbral angle is the spice double. So, uh, I would have made a terrible programmer ages ago when people actually needed their programs to work quickly. I mean, needed their programs to work correctly the first time. In function umbral data, expected expression before token. And you know what? I think that's because C defines its arrays like this. Take three! Woohoo! I'm very excited. Uh, oh. So now we must go over here and ask our friend Google, assigning to an array in C. C arrays, it's been interesting how they work. Hmm, oh. Uh, so 
So I this might not work actually because I already because I, I can't really declare an array here because it's already being passed into me. So I might have to go with the other method here. That's really icky. I don't like that. I can't reassign values. Let's see if there's a way to reassign values without having to reassign them. One. Uh, <sighs> okay. Okay. Let's see if this works, but I don't expect it to because it is uh, it is uh, redeclaring something that shouldn't be redeclared. Uh, Unpoint um declared it's a different kind of symbol. Okay, hang on. That's that's fixable. Um. Right, because it was a it was an array. So now. If this works, it might not actually do what we want. That's, you know, that's, that's life. Unpoint is declared as a different kind of symbol. Uh, so what was it? It was a... Now, bet you anything was actually a pointer to an array, because that's just a... Uh, well, you know what? Let's even do this. Let's give it... Let's let it be what it wants to be. And by the way, this is the... Uh, this is uh, exactly where I'm doing a lot of... A big waste of time. And I think the problem here is when we pass it, it actually becomes a pointer to an array. Um, this is not going to work because this, I'm, not, I'm pretty sure this doesn't actually make sense. Uh, yeah, screw it. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do it the hard way. Um, point zero equals if I could type. And this, m there might be a better way to do this. Uh, but I don't know it, and we have stuff to do. And I just realized there's a big mistake in here, but we'll fix it in a sec. Uh, C does not recognize spaces as being um, multiplication, obviously. So, okay. Minus SR times, okay, so let's see. I was hoping I'd change every space into a, a times, but I can't. There are some spaces that have totally different meaning. Okay, so if this compiles, if it compiles, it will work. This is not true, by the way. Okay, now let's see if it even compiles. TX is undeclared first, yep. So by TX, of course, I mean T's. This one I think I can do, though. And on the other hand, it might not be worth it, though. Ah! Yeah, the only one that appears more than once is uh, is TR, which is actually correct. So I don't need to change it. Uh, I hate my life. Okay. SX, of course, is S0. SY, of course, is S1. SZ Z is, of course, S2. I'll just say Z because I need to say it. And TR is, these are already defined, so we're good. So let's see what this does. Umv point. Now this is just a t typing error because now I'm just being like, I'm going nuts. Oh cool, I, I even cut and pasted and went nuts. All right. This, by the way, is not, oh Jesus freaking Christ. All right, hang on. Don't need that. And by the way, this is the kind of programming we could never get away with back in the olden days. I mean, because it took for... Oh, come on. Oh. All right. Hang on. That that one is not good. We, there should be an arctangent function. I think there's an arctan2 um, in C, but I thought there was also just a regular atan, of course. Uh, again, one of the big problems with my Rosetta library is... Uh, the, uh, the One of the problems is that function names are not consistent. ATAN here, ARCTAN in other places. And there's even an ATAN too, but that actually is different, so that's okay. So, 900 billionth times the charm. Uh, previous definition of planets was here. Okay, that... I think this might just be complaining that some of my files uh, redefine functions. So I think this is actually okay, believe it or not. Um, I mean, Zodiac fail is, is probably supposed to fail. Um, 
PC Zodiac. Okay, so now I'm going to do something which is known as totally wasting your time. I'm going to try to fix real quickly BC Zodiac if it does have a redefinition. Uh, if I do have a redefinition of planets or whatever, so... Okay. Uh, this is BC Lib H. Planets. So now I need to compare to see if these lines are equivalent. Uh, meaning that I sort of look at them. And they look fine to me. They look equivalent to me. Okay. Good deal. What else? Planet to stir I didn't like. Planet to stir. And I'm, I, I think I just copied these functions from here anyway. Oh. Um... Oh, <laughs> uh, so this apparently doesn't really do anything. Um, uh, this is probably broken. Oh, maybe it's not. Maybe there's a nested if here. So anyway, we don't really need um, we don't really need this function in two places. Ooh, shiny! I added some documentation. Okay. That was a total waste of time unless you, um... Okay... What? Oh, BC Zodiac 2. Okay. And that is, of course, the same thing as BC Zodiac 1, except it's not. And basically, we just need to get rid of this from there. And after this, if this compiles without errors, I mean, doesn't give me any errors, I'm going to go ahead and um, push it to uh, push it to Git before I forget. Okay, la 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 la. Who cares? All right, let's see a clean make. Okay, it's not a clean make, but uh, at least BC Lib doesn't have anything. Uh, so I know you can't see what I'm doing, and I'm going to give the very unhelpful. Uh, comment checkpoint and there's a project I have that is to fix all these gits and sort of go back and actually make you know fi find the diffs and make proper comments but it turns out the way uh, github works the comment itself is part of the of the push so that would require changing like an insane number of of things that you you know you have to change every hash basically so there might be another way to do that there might be a way to create a parallel mechanism to see the diffs and and use that and that and allow that to change um you know, being separate from git so it doesn't have to match the hash va hash value okay solid we now have this i don't know what we have we have bc lib.h okay so now um let's see if we can pass some umbral data so let's see if we have a playground up see which i would be surprised if we don't um yes I'm doing just like in the hang of the C spice kernel int main, and this is. I have no idea what this does. I'm sort of curious now. By the way, these functions here are not actually documented. They are the uh, nutation and obliquity of the ecliptic, uh, and they're not documented because they they're, they're weird. They, they don't really behave like. Holy crap! I do a lot of stuff here. Okay, and I see what I'm doing here. I'm using exit zero, so that new stuff can override old stuff. Um, so we do need all of this stuff. We do need this. Oh, so right here, <coughs> uh, we do have an exit minus one. So we, we can actually put some new code in here uh, and then uh, not, ha not have it interfere with anything. Okay, so let's see. We have a whole bunch of cool variables here. Um, so let's see. Um, I mean, and there's sort of a temptation here to uh, use test data. I mean, that's really what I should do. Um, I, uh, I'm torn. Because um, it would be a lot more fun to use, like, real data and then figure out whether or not, um, whether or not we're, uh, what's going on. Um, so let's go ahead and use real data. And if that doesn't work, well, because it's, it's more fun. Literally, that's the only reason we're using it. Um, 
And if that doesn't work, we'll, we'll take a step back and use the, we'll use test data to, to see what's going on. And I, I really don't know why I'm saying that because it's really so. Let's see what we have here. Uh, pause and new pause. Okay. So let me go ahead and declare. I'm gonna have the sun shining on the moon. And again, we have not lots of extra variables we don't need. And I'm gonna try using. I think there's a pause x y z function here. Uh, that just basically tells you. Um, the uh, Okay, so why do I care about that? And that really literally does nothing except make a call to Spike Z Planet. Okay, well, you know what? We're not going to do that. We're just going to use this. Um, planet here is going to be... Um, and I'm going to use this, the format of uh, the NAFE ID. I hope that allows for that. J2000, and I really want to use... Um, I mean, it doesn't matter as long as we're consistent with our positions. So I guess we'll, I guess we'll go ahead and use... Um, um, I guess we can go ahead and use... Uh, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Uh, we can use the NAFE IDs. Uh, we can use J2000 for everything. So here we're going to say moon. And now we're going to do the exact same thing for the sun, which is 10. And then we're uh, now. I don't. I actually don't know if this was gonna. This would have compiled before. So now I'm kind of worried. But. Um, and again, this is just for testing. And there should be a better way of printing out an array. But I don't know. I don't know what it is. Okay. So now let's rock and roll over here. We do make. I probably should have put less on that. Playground. Mm, so that probably means it actually did make. Compute the look. What? Okay, so maybe I use the one that requires <laughs> requires NAFE IDs as integers, not as strings. In which case, it's using the pointer of the string, which is something insane. Um, those are just warnings. Okay, so is that the position of the moon in? Um, in uh, in at uh, at basically at J two thousand, it's the hell out of me. Um, uh, let's actually see that that actually kind of looks right because the norm there is going to be um, about ninety about one hundred fifty kilometers one hundred fifty yeah that'd be nice one hundred fifty million kilometers from the sun, which is correct because that's about where the Earth is too, and so we can actually just do this. Even though I promise not to print too much crap, we can we can just do this a little bit, uh, and this is very nice because it actually returns a, a double. We don't have to uh, we don't have to encapsulate it. So let's go ahead and do this, and we're going to actually do this for the Earth too. Even though we're not going to use the Earth as in our calculations, we want to make sure that uh, we want to see how close to the Earth's center the umbral shadow is. Um, and from that, this is our first attempt to see whether we're even vaguely in the ballpark of uh so we should actually do ma oh okay, I can't do that because make will fail okay cool so it says here that the moon is about this makes this number is correct this number says the sun is pretty close to the solar system Barry center which I totally believe um and now let's let's go ahead and put go ahead and put the position of the earth in here too and then I'm going to try to find a time when there's an eclipse and see how close we can get. Or we can use the geometric finder to do that as well. So let's go ahead and do this for ta -ta -ta -ta. No, 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 no. Uh, the Earth is 399. Um, if you use 3, you would get the Earth's barest center. But that is actually 1,000 miles from the center of the Earth. And there's no need for us to do that because we really... Um, and actually, the curious thing is we might actually... If we use the Earth's barest center, we might actually be able to hit the umbra because the moon it would be in that direction. Um, but I don't really care. So that's the important thing here. Um, but that's sort of interesting, actually. I wonder if... I mean, this gravity and light are, are not related in that way, but, uh, but it is interesting. Okay, Earth 1. Earth 2, Earth 2. That's where you find all the other superheroes. 
Or actually, I think our Earth is dead. Never mind. All right, one more time. Okay, and yes, th these numbers make sense um, in terms of the norms, at least. And the Earth and the Moon are pretty close to each other, which is expected because the Moon orbits us. Okay, so now it's time to actually test our function. Now it's time to actually remember our function. All right, umbral data. Um, so we're going to send in the sun. Oh, we need the sun's radius. There's a way to do this. Um, and there's a spice function that does this, and I'm going to be lazy and see if I can find it by just doing this. Ooh. There's like an info function that will tell you, um, not geom info, something else. There is a way to get the radius of, of something and other information about it. Um, uh, I'm going to say try because it's triaxial ellipsoid is what it, I'm just curious what the hell this is. Oh, wow. That's probably sucking up a lot of uh, CPU and not necessary. Okay. Uh, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, so try it. Okay, I'm going to say one more, and if this doesn't work, I'm going to actually... GF occult, GF occult, surface normal vector, BC random once, and gosh darn it to heck. I know I've used it before, um, and ray, oh wow. Oh, these are, sorry, DSK is a type of file, it's not doing it. Frame information, kernel information might be it. K info C, and I could check here, because I, I know I've used it. Um, Unless it's being really obnoxious, and I'm... Uh, there's probably another one, actually. Space clock information. Frame information. That's not really what I... Okay. Return information about a loaded... Um, uh, let's take a look at the examples here. Um, yeah, this is not... Um, it's going to say the word body is going to be in it. Propagator to body solution. Surface and body ID to surface string. Surface ID code. Surface string to surface ID code. Trans initial. Po okay. Body fixed. Body ID code to name translation. Body ID code. Uh, did we go all the way around? No, I don't think we did. Name ID definition. Uh, surface IDs. Propagate. So it might be the word values might be in there. Find I ah, here it is bot FND that's the one, and I know I've used it so I'm kind of unhappy that it didn't. Seriously? 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 Cause I know I've used that one. Okay, hang on. Once again, I'm going to pursue something that's going to be a big waste of time. Oh, I think I know what's. I think I know what it might be. So let's see if I use it in my C programs. And I think I might have stuck it into one of my dot .h, um, bclib.h, which, which, which would mean you won't see it here. See so if that's the case. OK. Um, it's theoretically possible that I used it in an older version. And git log minus v. So let's go crazy. Let's actually go look through the git logs. Um, then there is a way to do that, actually. But <coughs> I mean, obviously there's a way, because if there wasn't, the git wouldn't be doing its job. Uh, but there's a nice, real nice way to do this. Um, it's git log... Um, Minus p minus u zero, I think. And I was I was cheating. I was looking at something that didn't just come straight from my from my head. All right. Now Cambodia. This is actually going to be every damn thing. So what did I say it was B O D F N D. Yeah. Da -na -na -na. This is going to be a fairly long, um, 
fairly long log. I'm almost tempted to redirect it to something and then just grep out of that uh, instead of having it generate and grep at the same time, which is actually technically more efficient. Um, and it's bugging me that it's not finding anything. Okay. Annoying. Of course, this is going to be a huge, huge file. So maybe that's not the correct thing to do here. All right, we'll give another 10 seconds. While it's doing that, I'm going to check to see if anyone's watching this, which, uh, if you are... No, good, I'm the only one. I pity the fool. Oh! No, I should have been doing this. I should not have been piping... Piping less is a bad idea. Mm, so we'll give this, um... Until the 30th second of the next minute. Um, now, if I, if I were an affiliate, I could run ads or something. Um, I'm not, so I'll just say that I like uh, Coke Zero in the hope they will... Well, they can't give me money because I'm not an affiliate, but, you know, I do like Coke Zero. It's a pretty good product. Uh, you know, it doesn't taste as good as the real Coke, but it has a lot less sugar. And so for someone who was addicted to Coke growing up, uh, Coke Zero is a very nice alternative. And that leaves me with two seconds to kill. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Um, going to do that. I don't know if this is going to work here, but um, I have a thing that lets me um, wait for a process to be done. Let me make sure there's only one. Yeah, there's only one git process. And it'll alert me when when this process is done. So I could do my grep bod find there. Uh, right now I think I'm just going to have to use it without um, without, you know, it's not that hard to use actually. Um, let's go over and use it. So bod find body and the thing that you want from it. It's very simple. Wait. Oh no, this is the wrong one. But it's very similar to this. It's um, Find values from the kernel pool. Um, return value, Badwar. So maybe I should have been doing a... Badwar sounds like a boudoir. Um, Badwar, right? Yeah, let's see what this... This is the, probably the one I've used. Um, and this is... Just should be really simple here. Dun, dun, dun... I'm going to be annoyed if I use this once and I got rid of it somehow, because it's a good function. Um, by the way, this function exists because uh, when you're editing Emacs, Emacs creates a bunch of stupid files for no reason. No one knows why. But, um, oh, I'm sorry. Hang on. You're supposed to use bod... This is just going to take me forever. Um, this You're supposed to use bod VCD and bod... Let me sorry, get rid of these. This I still want to keep. Uh, bod VCD and bod VRD. So... Let's go ahead and do that with star C. Or bod VRD. Um, there it is. I knew I used it once. I don't think I used bod... Oh, your mama! Okay, now i got to figure out... They look like I'm using them exactly the same. <laughs> oh, I think one of them requires... Um, Well, now it's not useful, is it? Oh, and actually, there it is. There's my pop-up saying uh, the, the, the program has ended. And now, I don't know how much disk space I have on this, because it's virtual. Holy crap. Oh, I know. I know where this is mounted. I know why that's happening. So, git logs. And I should have removed... Oh, I'm going to add a note to that, actually. Um... Doing alias remove move copy and others to the minus i versions, um, and I because uh, I'm just so used to seeing the minus versions, I, I don't really think I should you know you really shouldn't be relying on them. But wow, that file was so small it didn't change the the, the availability of the disk space availability. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at these two, and I think one of them takes integers and the other one takes strings. Is literally yeah, spice int and uh, spice character. So 
I'm going to use BOD VCDC. Sounds like a fun thing to say, doesn't it? BOD VCDC, and um, when I want the radius of the Earth and the Moon, I can get the radius, uh, sorry, of the Sun and the Moon, I can get the radius of the Earth just for fun. Um, so the thing you want to get, oh, actually I can look, I can copy one of my own. my own things here. One of my own pieces of code. It's code reuse, not the way you'd want it though. Okay. So this will get the three radii of the moon and put them in radii, which we don't actually want. Let's see, do we have uh, let's go ahead and create moon radii, M3, and sun radii, 3, and and I'm hoping I'm not redefining ER by doing that. If I am, it'll warn me, hopefully. All right, so let's go ahead and do that, and we're going to get um, MR. Wow, I, I really abbreviate. Okay. So now, um, an M needs to be defined. I'm not going to use it. it. It basically tells me how many results came back, and it is a spice int. So a lot of these things probably, I don't need these variables anymore because uh, usually when I test something and it works, we, we kind of put it into bclib if we can. And by we, I, I don't know why I said we. Um, okay. So let's be a little bit clever here. And uh, rad. Put in the moon radar. We're actually not going to use all three of them. Um, and two of them would be the same. Actually, I think all three of them would be the same for the moon. Um, it's a triaxial ellipsoid, but it's very close to being a sphere. Uh, what am I doing here? And I hope that. Okay. Wait, yeah, 1737. Oh, point 0.4. Yeah, because now we're going off the edge of the screen. Uh, yeah, it is. It is actually uh, it is a triaxial ellipsoid, but it actually happens to be a sphere as well. Uh, the sun, the only one that's not actually is going to be the Earth. The sun is uh, almost a perfect sphere, I think. So, I can actually reuse, um, I can actually re reuse the uh, end because I'm not, I'm just passing it as a reference and I'm not, um, I'm not using it. So, I mean, I really, if I needed that value, I would, of course, try to keep it separate. Um... So now I'm, I think I'm unhappy now. Um, I'm going to try to make this a little bit cleaner. Um, so we're going to do this. I do like the parentheses. I'm going to keep those. And then I think we'll have a separate thing for, for, for radii. It's going to be printf moon radii f and here it's going to be and one day I'm going to figure out how to do this. Maybe I'll just write a function that does this. Prints an array without having to do, like, three things. Although, if the more I think about it, the more that's going to be really difficult. Let's do SR here. Um, SR, SR. And if this works, by the way, I'm going to do a checkpoint save, because I, I, this is useful. If it doesn't work... Well actually, I might do it anyway. Uh, okay, let's take a look here. Moon radii. Sun radii, uh, yeah, we're the only, I mean, because the sun is a, a fluid, the moon is not a fluid, uh, but it's been flattened by, I, d I don't know, I can just make stuff up, uh, but, um, but I'm dealing with pop-up windows, by the way, that you can't see. Um, okay, so, um, so the Earth is really the only one that has a, of these three, that has a, a shorter polar radius than it does an equatorial radius, and the sun's a fluid, so uh, that's why the moon's a... Um, we will at some point have to decide uh, when we're doing this for real uh, which of these three radii we will use. I will usually pick the first one. Uh, and the first one and the second one are almost always identical. I don't know if we have any triaxial ellipsoids in the solar system that are like warped so that the t first two aren't the same. So now that we have that, um, I think we can now call umbral data. All that just to call umbral data. So umbral data, 
And we did have a, um, a place to keep the results. Didn't we? No, actually, sorry, we're sending these in. So this is um, Sun, Moon, and Earth. No, no, sorry. Uh, the Sun is the object that's bright. The Sun radius is going to be SR0. The Moon is the object that's going to be obscured. The Moon radius is this. Uh, and then... Do we have umpoint umvect defined? Do we have something defined where we can put these suckers? We do not. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, vec3, and again, I really need to clean up this variable list. Um, ang. So, I th think... Okay, I think... Um, I'm not surprised that compiled. I think for the last one, I actually have to pass it in as a reference because it's not an array. Arrays are implicitly passed by reference, but let's see if there's any... Um, so it's got to be a pass by reference, but... Um, But is the signature passed by reference? As let's try this. I'm I'm I, I'm suspicious that something's going to go wrong. I'm pretty sure you, when you pass in a double, you need to pass it. You need to change it. So you need to pass in. Um, you need to pass it in as a reference. But it's possible that C will figure this out for me. Although C has a pretty bad reputation of figuring things out for people. Uh, so okay. And the return values we want are um point. Um, vec and um, dang. So I guess I want to see if this even bothers to compile. Um, oh yeah, it doesn't like this at all. F expected statement, expected statement. So something is very. Oh yeah, because only in Mathematica do you call functions like that. In in real life, you use parentheses. Uh, let's see. I really need to figure out a way to just make one of these at a time. Okay, cool. I, I, actually, I don't know if that actually helps at all. I think one way to check to see whether or not um, something's changed, so this would be like d <laughs> make date. This would be a way of check. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it changed just recently. So, okay, one more time. So it's 1904 and it, it changed in 1903, so this is the most recent version, I'm convinced. Okay, now, let's break everything. I'm going to print the umbral data. Um, the umbral point. The umbral vector and the umbral angle. Your mama. Um, the umbral vector. And the umbral angle, which is of course just um, just a single number. Okay. Now I'm getting lonely and want to see if anyone's in chat. Nope. Okay. So let's do this. Okay, and it did change, so it, it it's the most recent version. Um. And as we can see, nothing good happened. Uh, so the umbral data and the umbral vector were not changed. And the umbral angle, the, the umbral angle I'm a little bit worried about because I think we need to pass them in a different way. Um, but we should be able to put in the umbral points uh, and umbral vector as just uh, these numbers. So let's see what's going on here. So here I define number point. Now the question is, oh hello, 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 hello. Lunar Eclipse, that is correct, I remember you. You're 7 sat rdyz, 7 sat rdyz, uh, is a, is a uh, person I follow, and I don't know if she follows me as well. I do remember you if I said she, and if I'm wrong, if you're a guy, let me know, but I'm pretty sure I remember who you are, and uh, unless you've changed, you are a she. 
uh, unless you've decided to transform gender or something. Okay, so good to see you. Um, anything you need help with, I can help with. If you just <laughs> a little bah ha ha, it, it yeah, I'm pretty sure you are. I, I think I remember who you are. Um, and I do try to watch you when I can. So um, if there's anything I can help you with, or if you just want to watch, or if you just want to come by and say hi, that's all cool. Um, right now, things are not working correctly, but I think I don't know. I don't know, even know why they're not, but I think I can debug this a little bit. So, um, so, so the the point here is we're actually assigning on um, point, and I'm almost wondering if we should have not sent it in as a um, point three, but as well, you know what? Let's just um, in subroutine because if it's not being calculated properly in the subroutine, we're effed anyway. I'm going to put a three dots here just so if you say something I'll see see it because I because it, it'll be after my message. Um, so if this works then we were in con if this doesn't work then we have some like real issues. Okay. And I guess this should actually be ls minus l now cuz I don't want the uh K oh that didn't compile. Make date cuz the the yeah so what's going on here? What's wrong with playground? Oh, well, I definitely changed something, didn't I? Did I save it? Oh, there's one little weirdness here. If I only change bclib.h, um, the bc sudo make program does not rebuild stuff, and I'm going to fix that. I think. Okay. Force, oh, I could also just use the force, uh, let's see. Target. Mm. Okay, I could, in theory, put something in here that checked for the bclib.h time. But I think using the force option is a lot better. And if I do that, I actually have to call it like this. Oh yeah, that's going to make everything, isn't it? I'm I'm a freaking genius. Let's see. Oh, and this doesn't even bother to. Um, I'll add the note here. And if standard changes, then also this needs nbclib.h. And this really should be able to take arguments instead of recompiling everything. So, um, anyway, that should have done it, though. Yeah, okay, so this is now compiled correctly. And let's see what's going on here. So in sub, we do have this, I have no idea how, what the hell this vector is supposed to be, but we do have something different here. So the question is, why is my assignment not sticking? The other question is, why don't can I go to the right file? Right, here we go. Um, so we have it correctly, and I'm assigning it on point. And I'm just really starting to wonder if the, um, you know, I have other functions here. Why don't I take a look at them real quick? Double time, spice position, spice double position three. Um, see that that works. Um, Yeah, there's more than one place where I assign, where I have people pla pass in, um, hmm, pointer to an array, but this should work. I'm trying to find where else I have stuff like this. Um, yeah, and I think, okay, so this one actually, the last one does have to be passed in as a, uh, as a pointer, um, but the, the array should be okay. Yeah, I should be able to pass in arrays and then define them. Uh, yeah, that should work. I mean, I, I don't know if that function works. I haven't really looked at it right in exactly right now. Um, OK. 
Okay, so what the hell's going on here? Umbral point, so we print it, and then when it returns, maybe I'm printing the wrong thing. And this is where, and it's also possible, this gets very ugly. There are some weird errors that go on um, that printf can cure. In this case, it didn't cure them. Oh, hang on, did it? Uh, wow. And this is because there's, if there's a minor compiler error that I'm not catching, um, this, is, this is actually weird. Hang on. So in sub, it's equal to that. And then when we come back here um, and print it out here, umbral point. Um, oh, I'm a moron. Yeah, again, like I said, with vectors, with arrays, you actually cannot do what I just did. you do have to bring it out all the way. You have to enumerate, at least that's the way I, there might be a way to do it, but I don't know how, what it is. So this was probably just a waste of time there. Let's see what's going on here. And uh, no, we did not get a recompile. Why? Oh, because I need to pass the last argument as, as a float. Which I kind of, as a pointer to a float. Which is kind of what I expected, actually. Okay, no, didn't compile again. Incompatible types from type double. From type double? No, that's the address. That's a uh, that's a pointer. Uh, hang on, maybe I forgot to change the other one. Spice double on the hang. Yeah. And I. That is a pointer to an eye. That is a pointer to something. Okay, hang on. Uh, we know there's unused variables, but... We also know that there's no need for it to recompile everything. In file... bclib in function... Er, incompatible types when assigning to spice type... Ooh, yeah, here's why. Um, I can't assign to the pointer. I have to assign to the value. And I know that works because I've done it before. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to say, I'm not pretending I didn't say that. Okay, so 19.13, so it's good. It's working. I mean, we're at least up to date now. And let's see. Okay, good. So the values are coming back. The in sub is, is fine. I'm going to get rid of the in sub routine and then go ahead and punch this back to git. Uh, the UA value, I'm pretty sure I need to do something different there to print it. Um, so I'm going to get rid of this real quick. And I'm ang. Oh, that actually should have changed something. Uh, tr over v norm v sub c. Yeah, that is amazingly weird that I tried to take the uh, the norm of a um, of a of a function. That is brilliant. It's of course the um, the norm of the vector, the um vec that I got. Solid if this works. And no, because I need to I need to I'm not gonna use force this time. I'm just gonna make a really minor change to playground so it forces it to recompile that. And nine hundred billionth times a charm. Uh nice. That is a very small either we had an eclipse at that time or something. The umbral angle is well. Actually, it's it, it's going all the way from the from yeah. The moon to the moon is much smaller than the sun. It's a huge distance, so that might actually be an acceptable umbral angle. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and push this, like I said, and I'm doing that where you can't see it. Okay. And now let's see what the Earth's... I want to sort of see the Earth's distance from the umbral point. Um, and then the sort of the trick here would be to find where it's really, really small and, um, and see if there's an eclipse on that day. Because um, we, we know there are going to be at least one eclipse in the year 2000. In fact, there will be... I think there has to be a minimum of three solar eclipses every year. Uh, don't quote me on that, though. So we will definitely find a day when there's an eclipse, but we'll see see how we do this. Um, let's see. 
So now what we want here is, and we'll call it, we're really, really poking our variables today. We'll call it dist. I hope I don't already have the dist. I don't. Okay. Um, and so what we want here is v sub c. And that's going to be earth. We have that position. Uh, we have umbral point position. And the result will be dist, which is a three-dimensional array. And what I actually want to print out is, of course, the, the norm of dist. I want to see how far away it is. And we'll call that ndist, because that's a confusing name. So let's see. Now keep in mind, we're doing this all with et equals zero. We're going to have to put this all in a loop or something. Well, actually, probably shouldn't do that. Um, but we, we, we right now, we're just doing with sort of a, um, OK, did change, uh, ndist. So the distance from the Earth to the umbral point is 293. So I get the feeling our umbral point's going in the wrong direction. Either that or the, um, hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's not good. Um, that means it's on the other side of the, of the, uh, we're looking at the umbral distance of the moon pointing into the sun or something. Um, so I'm not happy. I think I'm pretty sure if I reverse moon and sun over here, which I'm going to do just as a test, uh, I'll get the right result. But that means that I've set up my function backwards. So we'll do moon, MR, sun, SR. But so this, this will probably work, but at the same time, uh, 1918, so it's good. No, it does not work. Uh, OK, so we have done something hideously wrong. And by we, I mean you. Because I bl blame you for everything. OK, while we're doing hideously wrong things, let me check something real quick. We've been streaming for an hour and 12 minutes, which I think is the correct amount of time to stream. So um, let me see if there's anyone in chat that I want to say hi to. Hello, one person in chat. If I can help you, let me know. If you just want to hang out, that's cool too. Um, but if uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the stream in a few seconds unless you say something. So. So this would be time to speak up or forever uh, hold your peace. And I do think we're going to come back to this. I don't think this is a serious problem. I'm pretty sure this is a uh, this is a directional issue. I think um, um, I think that um, I I think I, I think I sort of know what's going on here, and um, and I think that's it's not a huge issue. Um, I th I'm going to just keep saying that. All right, no one's interested, so I'm going to go ahead and kill the stream. Thank you very much for watching. And if you like what you saw, nah, I don't care.